Hi, everybody. Um, I know this is the developer track, hypothetically, but I figured that um, because we've just spoken about uh, the mobile web, I'm not going to speak about Obox Mobile. Also, it's because it's a paid platform, I'm not so sort of comfortable like just touting Obox Mobile the whole time. Um, I also started as a web developer and then built my own business. So I'm sure there's many of you here who are sort of people who are, still have a job as developers but want to, maybe want to start your own business and become entrepreneurs. So this is a story about how I literally, my brother and I literally used to take this pamphlet here, drive around on a scooter and put it in a post box and that's how we sold websites. It was a brilliant idea and it never worked. <laughs> so um, when I left school, my aim was to become a racing driver. Uh, I'd been racing from the age of 15 and I was going to go straight to Formula One. So I did the minimum possible in school just to get through and literally scraped through on all my results because I didn't really care and had no plans on studying or doing anything like that um, until my dad said to me, yeah, so how are you going to pay for your racing? So that was a bit of a shocker. So he's like, you either study or you work. So there was no chance in hell I was going to sit in front of a lecturer ever again. So I decided to work at his company for a bit. And uh, the first day that I went in, he showed me a bit of code. Uh, I think it was an, uh, a table, and it just went open table, close table. And by the end of the day, he wanted like this full program running, which had a report and stuff, and I had to use Cold Fusion at the time. So the one thing I saw about in school was that I'd never be behind a desk working on programs, because my dad was, he's a software developer. And to me, that was the biggest nightmare. Um, Ten years after I say that, I sit in front of a computer every day. Um, so for a year, I was a developer at my dad's company called Perisoft. And I basically developed all the stuff on his website, which at the time, it, you know, it had custom developed forums and anything. There was no such thing as plugins or anything like that. And um, then my brother arrived, and it turned out that he was a much better developer than I ever would dream to be, which were, for me was actually a bit of a relief because I, I hated developing. Um, I just don't have the mental capacity to cope with everything and I'm a slow learner. So I never learned JavaScript or anything like that. I still don't understand it. So when he came in and he could do all that stuff, I was like, cool. I can do a bit of CSS, a bit of tables, and a bit of fireworks. So maybe we can start doing some design stuff. So um, what we did was we used to yeah, what we used to do was print these pamphlets with our Obox logo, which at the time stood for outside the box design. And uh, it had these guys in the front with boxes on their heads running around in suits in the middle of a field. And uh, what we did was we'd, we'd drive around on our scooter and like we didn't have backpacks or anything. We'd put it in like the front of our hoodies and like zip it up and like go post box to post box in Hart Bay, massive market. And uh, <laughs> put put these things in there and hope and pray that someone would phone us. And um, I'll never forget, like, the one time we had this ingenious idea to put them on people's cars, uh, on the car window of uh, people's cars in their park in Camps Bay. But, uh, so I gave it to my friend who lives in Camps Bay. I gave him, like, a whole bunch of pamphlets, and he went and put them around, and it rained. So we got all these phone calls, and we thought it was all, like, leads and business and stuff, but it was everyone complaining that the pamphlet had stuck to their windscreen, and because they hadn't noticed, when they turned on their windscreen wiper, it would like smudge a whole windscreen. So they're phoning us to like, <laughs> like tune the hell out of us, you know, like what the hell are you guys doing? So that was a shocking experience. But eventually we got like, I think two or three leads and uh, we charged, we had like this mega special, we do your logo and everything. We charge like uh, 8,000 Rand for a whole website. And like, this was like, man, we, we are only on our way up. I always wanted a Ferrari. So I'm like, this is what we're going to do. We can do like 10 of these a day. It's going to fly through them. And uh, we slowly discovered that, you know, this, this way of doing business was not efficient. And we often wondered, like, who else is out there? Like, you guys here, we had no idea what a blog was. We didn't know any other developers or designers or anything. We were just wondering, like, there must be someone else out there. Oh, well, it's cool. We'll just keep putting post, uh, pamphlets in post boxes. So eventually, I convinced my brother, and he reluctantly agreed to do it. I said, Mark, we have to create a blog or this thing where, like, people are talking about stuff. And at the time, I still had no idea what WordPress was or anything. So we built our own like sort of CMS at the time to create We Are Not Freelancers. And the reason it was called that was because whenever I told people, you know, that I was a web designer, they go, oh, so you're a freelancer. It used to offend me. So <laughs> we created this site. And um, 
because of the hand-drawn design at the time, it was super unique, and I like scanned it in and everything. We got a huge amount of uh, hits to the site from CSS galleries and things like that, and we started to get noticed, and we started to discover that there's work on the web. You know, we didn't have to put pamphlets in post boxes anymore. Um, so we did this for a while, and like through this, we got a comment on one of our posts about WordCamp. And um, at the time of WordCamp, when I still didn't know what WordPress was, we were developing our own CMS called OCMX. And OCMX was built in Cold Fusion, and this is 2008 when I designed this. And we still use it today for our obox.design.com uh, website. And it manages all our products, um, uh, documentation, everything. Everything that we do business with today, like it was born in OCMX, in Cold Fusion. And if we thought, felt that it had a use in WordPress, we'd put it in WordPress. So we wanted to go to this WordCamp thing and see what WordPress was about so we could see how OCMX could compete with WordPress. So like, once again, like the dream, we were just going uphill. <clears throat> so we get to WordCamp, we sit next to this guy called Matt Mullenweg, and we're like, what's the big deal? We don't know who this guy is. And like, then he goes up and talks about WordPress, and Mark and I are still like, who is this guy? Like, why is it such a big deal? And like, at the time, it was 2008, still early days, and we still refused to get onto this, this platform because we didn't like the idea that, we, that it wasn't our code. And even now today when we develop plugins or whenever we want something done, we, we never use um, outsource code or plugins editing. We build it in-house, which I think is a pretty good uh, uh, practice to go by if you want to create your own sort of WordPress company. Like avoid plugins as much as you can because if they go and change something and you've got 30 or 40 themes that you need, to, you need to now go into each theme and adjust it according to their plugin, you're at the mercy of them. So this WordPress thing was like, there's just no ways, okay? Now with OCMX, we wanted a way to basically provide a client with a template and we modify the template and, you know, that's, that's a great way to, to sell websites uh, when it would only take you a week, hypothetically, so you could push this thing out. So we kept avoiding uh, WordPress and we created this site called From the Couch. From the Couch is a video blogging site and at the time I believe it was the first of its kind. Uh, we'd sit on a couch for five to ten minutes a day, every single day, and talk about what we had learned and knew about the web. And uh, we slowly started to like, realize that people were, were watching uh, our show. So after, I don't know, a year and a half, we had, a, we had this audience, and that was like the growth at the time. And even though it was maybe a thousand hits a day or something like that, the people who were watching it, every single one of them came every single day back to watch the show. And if we were an hour late releasing a show, like they'd let us know about it. So every day at four o'clock, we'd like stop work and go sit down on our couch and we'd create the show. And uh, I've just got like a sort of one of the videos from, from back in the day, which is like sort of highlights reel. Sorry. Tired. We're at the white first place 
Okay, so with this audience now that we're watching us, um, we figured that we had uh, enough traction to launch a theme company. And uh, we kept threatening to do it, kept threatening to do it, and uh, I remember we were at, uh, what's that conference at RSA Web host? Net Profits. Net and I was with Shal Norman in the line, and like I barely knew the guy at the time, and we were, we were busy getting food, and I was talking to him about starting this theme company, and he says, you know, David, that door is getting very, very like tight. Like the light's just shining out of it. Like you've got, you've barely got a chance to do this anymore. So literally, uh, I went and sat down next to my brother at the next talk, and I said to him, "Bro, when we get home tonight, we have to start creating a theme company." So on from the couch, we made this crazy promise to uh, create a theme company in one month. Now at the time, we never had a platform to sell any of our products on. We never had forums. We never had documentation. We never even had themes. And the most WordPress work Mark had done was this theme for a, guy, a designer called Liam McKay where we had two weeks to do it in. So we figured if we could do it in two weeks, like we could easily get out three themes and a whole, comp and a whole uh, website out which is custom built in under a month. Uh, it involved 20 hour days, seven days a week. Um, the social life was non-existent. We just, we'd work until two, three in the morning, go back and sleep, come back at seven, eight, nine in the morning like zombies until the very last day where it took us 52 hours of no sleep to finally get this WordPress uh, site out. Now what everyone sort of misunderstands and like this is what you see WordPress companies popping up all the time is that you think, or many people think that all I need is a WordPress company which sells themes and I'll sell themes. Uh, so we, when we press launch we're expecting this massive success and in the first month we sold four themes. So we're like wow this is going well. And uh, <laughs> That's when we realized, like, of course, now we've got this company, this great platform and all this traction, but what we need is, like, a really good product. And um, <laughs> the, when we launched our, our theme called Press, we started to realize that there was actually a business in doing this. But to get your product right and to understand, like, what people want, what people need, it's not just a matter of launching a theme company. That's just not, that's not how it's done. And, like, a lot of these sites which launch every day, they'll launch and then they'll close tomorrow or they'll just quietly fade away. So we just kept pushing, and uh, we just kept making themes. We just kept, uh, you know, answering our support questions and blogging and doing from the couch for a, bit, uh, for a while after that. And we started to realize that we slowly, slowly started to like gain this following. And um, like, if, if we look now today, we got, you know, thousands and thousands of people using our stuff. I mean, uh, Selector, uh, one of our free themes, just got launched on WordPress.com, and it's gaining like 500 users a day. Now, at the time of launching, when we only did four sales, that was like, we could have never dreamt of that. But it took like, even the day after we, we launched our themes after a 52-hour uh, non-stop work day, we still worked until 3 o'clock that next morning, trying as, as hard as we could just to like uh, get things working, get things going. And it, it took a full year of like trying, like pushing as hard as we could and like working longest hours and like studying the market, asking our users what they wanted in order to build like a sustainable company where if we wanted to, we wouldn't have to do client work anymore. Um, through that, we, we learned a qu quite a few lessons and I just want to share them with you today. It's like 
just things which I live by every single day when we create a product or anything like that. And um, the first one I learned was when we launched We Are Not Freelancers, I said to my brother, you know, if we get 100 hits in a month, like that's, we'll be doing okay because at the moment we got zero. The problem was when I got to 75 hits in a day, I was like quite satisfied. I was like, cool, that's enough. So you must always like, you know, when you see a site that's launched, I mean, not launched, but like that does a million page views a month, and you think, geez, how the hell do they get there? It's simple. Their target is a million page views a month, not 100,000, not, oh, for a South African company, we're doing 20 page views a month. It's really good because we're a South African company. Rubbish. You guys, w w the internet, there's no boundaries. So you must always compete with on an international level and push those boundaries all the time. Um, timing is everything in the sense that, you know, when you launch a theme, like, for example, now, like, the, the craze is responsive design. It's a good time to make a responsive theme, in my opinion. Um, I'll never forget when uh, Adi and I were trying to get hold of the guys at Tumblr.com, like, geez, for two or three months, and, like, we'd, like, try and find email addresses and, like, share them, and no one was listening to us, and eventually, like, Adi, he got a, an email address, and when the day that the Tumblr themes launched, I straight away went to Tumblr's competition, and I found the email of the founder of Postris. And uh, I said to him, look, Tumblr's released these themes. Like, don't you guys want premium themes? And the very next morning at 6.30, uh, I'd set up a Skype meeting with the guy. And uh, once I had those Postris themes, I could uh, then go back to Tumblr and say, look, we're doing micro-blogging themes. Like, give us a shot at doing Tumblr themes. And uh, that's how we got into both platforms as sort of like approved premium members, uh, premium producers of themes. Um, whenever we launch a theme or a product, like our our plugin Obox Mobile, we, we launch something sort of bare bones which works first and then uh, we gather feedback and launch features later. Just make sure that when you launch a product it works and just focus on getting that thing to work and getting a bit of traction people buying something that works. It may not be the best. At the time when we launched Obox Mobile it was not as good as WP Touch but it worked and it, in my opinion it kind of looked better. So that was our, our main selling point was it was a gorgeous design. And now recently we've launched, we've had enough time and experience to launch features which we feel uh, the users absolutely need without it looking like bloatware. And yeah, that's it. If anyone wants to talk to me about becoming a developer at Obox, just let me know. You can talk to me now or afterwards. And yeah, thank you for listening.